Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kathy Hester, and welcome to my kitchen. Today, we're going to do another two-parter, just like we did yesterday, because I thought that worked out really well. I've been trying to figure out how to do slow cooker recipes in a live, and that's kind of hard, because there's a lot of slow cooking nobody needs to see. So that's why part one and part two. And also, if you're here, say hi and tell me how the weather is. It's a little warmer here today, but it's still got some good fall vibe going. And I didn't bring my sweet potatoes over here. So I'll be sad about that, but that's why I have shorts on. <laughs> um, let me get this camera ready to go for overhead too. Okay, so today I'm gonna make a variation of a sweet potato doll that's in the revised vegan slow cooker. It's also in the original vegan slow cooker cookbook. So if you have either one, you've got the recipe. I'm gonna tweak it. And so hopefully, just like yet the one yesterday, I will be putting it together and then putting it up on the blog separately so that there will be a recipe. And hey, Miss Brandy, I haven't seen you in forever. It is good to see you. Very, very good to see you. So yesterday, you know, I made that um, a delicata lentil soup, and now it's Cheryl's favorite soup. So um, Howard Jacobson just came over to pick up some stuff, and, and Cheryl's like, you must try this soup. It's the best soup ever. And I'm like, okay. So if you didn't see that one, go back and watch it, because it's going to be just about as easy as today. We're gonna, so this is what I did before we got here. I chopped up some sweet potatoes. They don't look like sweet potatoes. They're kind of fingerling white sweet potatoes. I, and I know I'm going to get the question, are those the same things as Hannah yams? And I don't know. So if you know, please put in the comments. And actually, I can show you what I have left over. So if that helps for them not to be chopped up. I'll do an overhead. We'll get exciting. Ooh. That is so out of focus. I thought I just focused it. Focus. Camera. put on. You didn't see my magic wand going. So these are the potatoes that I got from the Misfit Market people. And it just kind of said small white sweet potatoes. So I don't know what makes a Hannah yam a Hannah yam in particular. Or if it's a truly a yam and not a sweet potato because we just interchange those all the time in the United States. Um, I know, they're really pretty fresh. So, well, and I see a lot of people are here. Come on, tell, say hi, let me know where you're from. It makes my day, seriously. I sit in the house and I work. So, what I, also what I did yesterday is I left it on high the whole time because I'm kind of getting a late start for dinner, right? 1.30. But since a lot of us are working from home, we can do this, just cook on high instead of on the typical low. So I'm going to add about four cups of water. You could add broth, but I don't think it's really necessary. You don't want to really dull the flavors that we're going to put in there. And then this is probably three to four cups of small pieces of potato. They don't have to be white sweet potatoes. Um, traditionally, I make this with plain old orange sweet potatoes. You could also, I knew people were excited we did something with winter squash. You could put acorn squash in here or butternut squash. You could do all that too. So don't even think about that. We're going to use today three different beans. And let me see what, I'm going to try and refer back to my recipe as I change it. <laughs> Um, I was using four cups of water and one and a half cups of yellow split peas. So if where you are, you can't really get to the Indian market for whatever reason, or you don't have one. The yellow split peas you can find in just your regular grocery section will work just fine. We're going to use three fancier named um, split lentils. So one is going to look super familiar. These guys, can you kind of see? Yeah, see that unmistakable orange color of red lentils, which is also weird, isn't it? That we call them red lentils and they're not red. But they're really pretty. I'll let you guys see that over. Isn't that pretty? 
So we're gonna use half a cup of these. And remember, these are always going to melt into kind of a yummy broth. I hate to say nothing because it's not nothing. And this is like a four pound bag I bought at the Indian market. I don't have the price on it, but they're so inexpensive that getting a four pound bag at the Indian market is usually way better than going to Whole Foods and getting them in bulk. We're gonna use another one that are like little teeny tiny baby lentils, which are mung dong, mung dal. And I love mung dal. I wanna get some of these in the, um, let's see if I can move that so you can see them pour a little bit at least. And these are more like football shaped and or oblong at least um, than the normal yellow split peas that we get that look just like green split peas, but they're yellow. Okay, now let me move this back. And we'll pour these in and let you see these. And these are just pretty. And if you wanted to, you could do half red lentils and half yellow split peas too. So, I have some that are getting, whoa! Can you guys hear them clatter across the floor? There's some that were not sealed off well, so I am scraping them off of my counter. I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> and these are Tordal, and actually I have a little bit of red doll mixed up in there, which is my own fault. You, you may or may not be able to see that. So these are split pigeon peas. And so I learned from my friend Kalpana. Here, I'll let you. Because that's, that's most of the hard work that we've done right there. So we have the majority of the the doll and the stew right there. We're gonna add a bunch of different other yummy, yummy things. So she taught me that you can have all different kinds of yellow dolls, like all kinds. She's like, I make like 16 of them. And so it depends on the spices that you use and the kind of beans that you use. But again, you can get red lentils and yellow split peas right at your like food line or whatever the mid to lower level supermarket is so you can get it without paying a premium price okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put in about a teaspoon and a half of garam masala which is not that one and what garam masala is is a mixture of different spices so each garam masala that you might get could be just a wee bit different and because my friend howard when he came over he was making i make cheater dose of potatoes. So like when you make a crepe, I have the udapam recipe and you can make the crepes out of that same recipe. And I just take some potatoes and mash it up with some garam masala and some salt and some turmeric and garlic and onion powder. And he said his didn't taste the same when he made it at home and it was because his garam masala was different. So if you're doing something, he said his tasted um, too raw. So what you could do and we could have done this with this too, is you could lightly toast or lightly saute in a dry pan your garam masala. If you wanted to just mix it on something and you felt like yours just didn't taste quite right raw. Then we are going to go ahead and put in, I'm gonna put about a quarter teaspoon of cumin in there. And one of my tricks when I do a slow cooker recipe is all the things I put in, I keep out to the side. And you'll see this, so when tonight, when I look at it, I'm gonna adjust all these flavors. So we're gonna put, I don't know what I, oh, I was sauteing an onion. We're gonna put a half a teaspoon of garlic powder in there, and we're gonna put a half a teaspoon of onion powder. Cause that's just how I'm feeling today. Okay. And so I also want you to really see just how easy it is. We're just playing mostly with flavor at this point. 
And let's put in a half teaspoon of turmeric because turmeric is just good for you. And it's tasty too. It's got all the things. Um, I'm gonna put just a little bit of ground mustard. So I, does this have like what, no, this is the one that doesn't tell me. It's like pinch, dash, drop. So I think it's like a 16th of a teaspoon, 1 32nd of a teaspoon. So let's do like a 16th and I'll show you what I'm guessing that looks like. Maybe, maybe just a little bit less. Okay. Aw, thank you, Kara. Kara says, I'm a good presenter and I'm good natured and informative. Will you write that note to Cheryl so my wife can know that too? <laughs> I say, Kara, you don't live with me all the time. So that, that is part of it. <laughs> but I know a lot of us have been cooking for ourselves more than ever before. It's slow cooker season and what's so nice is you can make some of these soups and stews and just like not think about it the rest of the day. You could choose to add some chili powder or not. Now this would not be chili for the stew powder. So like in my case, it's cayenne. Cayenne is not the same chili that you get at the Indian market, but it's the chili that's in my spice drawer. And it's also the one that gives the least amount of like a detectable flavor. Like if I put polte or ancho in here, we would know. You would taste those different levels. And this is pretty much just a hot. So I'm going to put about an eighth of a teaspoon, a light eighth of a teaspoon. Only because Cheryl doesn't like spicy foods. Okay. And so let's see this. All right. I'm just going to mix this in a little bit together. And also, I'm probably going to give it a quick smell just to see what it smells like right now. Okay. And it's going to progress. These spices, as they get warmer, are going to make a bigger flavor as well. Um, I'm just feeling like maybe I need a little more garlic powder. So I had said a half, and let's just go for a whole teaspoon of garlic powder. So if you see this as a recipe, you might be like, oh my God, there's so many ingredients in there. Because there's, here, again, I'll move this. I don't think you need to see that overhead view anymore. But we're looking at these for spices, right? So what we have inside, oh good, you can see all of this from here. So what we have inside here, we have water, sweet potatoes, split peas, or lentils, right? And even though I took those lentils and broke them down into three different pieces, that's what's in there. And it took me, because those were fingerling sweet potatoes, organic, didn't peel them, I just washed them and chopped them. So it took almost no time. So that's three ingredients. And then we've got seven ingredients over here. So when you look at a recipe, especially if it's for the slow cooker and you're like, there are 10 ingredients, I can never chop all 10 ingredients. Well, you make sure that you really look because chances are it's just stuff you throw in here. Now in the original recipe, um, and in case you missed it, this is the original was from the vegan slow cooker. And um, it doesn't, it's not the same one we're doing now. It is a sweet potato and chard doll, and we're probably gonna go ahead and put, I have a lot of kale. So I'm probably gonna stockpile this thing with kale. Um, but most of the things in here are pretty easy. And in this recipe, I actually sauteed the onions first instead of using onion powder. And that's always a possibility. Another thing you can do, if you know that probably the holidays are gonna get busy for you, even though you're staying at home, maybe that will even make you not want to cook. Do you know what I mean? Because maybe you're kind of bummed that you don't get to do all the things you're normally doing. Saute up a bunch of onions and put them in the freezer in like one half and one onion bunches. And then you can just throw that in the slow cooker. So you can still have the benefit of the beautiful flavor that you get from the sauteed onions because they, they cook down and they get sweeter and they just have a more complex flavor that adds to the whole. If you don't want to do that, 
I would use onion powder before just throwing raw onions in there. And Cheryl hates raw onions, so I don't really have a choice. And if you don't mind it, it's probably okay, but it's just as easy, if not easier, to just never chop up an onion and use onion powder if that's what's going on. Um, do you guys have any questions? Because if not, what I'm gonna do too is I just have some um, long grain brown rice and I am probably gonna set that into a rice cooker. I have like a fancy sort of thing and I'll, I'll unveil that later tonight when I unveil this. So the most important parts of slow cooking is one, get it in there. Get your dinner in there right now because it's gonna save me a lot. I have to teach this afternoon. Um, and so now all I'm gonna to have to do is go, look, I'm gonna unveil this for you. Get the spices spot on, add some more vegetables, and that's it. My rice will be done, this will be done. Um, I have a Tasty Bite mushroom masala that I'm thinking of serving with this. If you can't do oil, you can't really do the Tasty Bites. And last class I did for September, I actually did all Instant Pot Indian stews so that you can make some of those and freeze them. So you can still have the convenience of a Tasty Bite, right? Which is just, let me open it, put it, you know, heat it up, ta-da, it's done but you can make it fit your dietary requirements. Um, ah, good question, Miss Kara. Kara asks, how long can you keep sauteed onions in the freezer? And I have no exact answer, but I would think a few months at the very least, probably three to four months. Um, I've kept onions in the onions and peppers in there as long, not sauteed. So I would assume sauteing would actually extend the life out a little bit more than that. And those of you who don't know, you can just chop up onions and chop up peppers and mushrooms and freeze them without um, doing anything else like parboiling them or cooking them. You can just do it, but you're not going to use them raw again. So it would only be for things that you're going to cook. So the other night, I made this great fettuccine uh, with mushrooms and I had fresh mushrooms in the fridge and they went bad after four days. And I was really mad because I had like a two pound giant thing of cut mushrooms and they were just done. I went downstairs, grabbed a big thing of portobello's I had chopped up. They were awesome and I probably did that two months ago. So I love having those little surprises and I leave bell peppers. Even if you just go to Trader Joe's, they have like the tri-colored bell peppers that you can buy and keep some of those in your, um, in your freezer for emergencies because bell peppers don't last that long in the fridge, right? Onions only last as long as they last. They, they last pretty long, but you, you, it's a little more peeling and a little stronger in the cutting. So if I'm being pristine and good, <laughs> I get my onions, I chop them up and I put them immediately in the freezer because we don't do a lot of raw onions. So it's not a big miss. It's all, I'm the only one who does. So maybe I'll leave a little one out. But sometimes like now, I get a little bit lazy and I haven't put anything in and into the freezer as far as cutting up onions or peppers. But that's just another thing. Um, Okay, so again, I see some new people are here, so let me go over what we did. This is part one of our sweet potato. Let me get a spoon so I can show you. All the, all the beans are down at the bottom. There we go. There's a good shot. So what we have in here is we have three kinds of lentils, though you could use just, um, you could use yellow split peas and or red split lentils because you can get those anywhere. These white things are actually sweet potatoes. They're just white fingerling sweet potatoes. Some water and then an array of spices and herbs. So what we'll do is we will come back. I'm going to cook this on high and around dinner time-ish, which I'm hoping will be 536-ish. I can't pinpointed exactly. Um, we'll unveil this. I'm going to add in some kale 
and then I'm also going to be um, adjusting all the spices so you can see. Because the number one thing that goes wrong when you slow cook, when someone says, everything tastes the same out of my slow cooker, that is not the slow cooker's fault. The slow cooker gives, it, gives you what you gave it, right? But it is true that the flavors can degrade in spices and herbs especially over the cooking time, but you still want to infuse your beans with them, right? So you still want to have it in there for part of the cooking time, but you may need to add a good amount more before you go to serve. So that's, that's part of what this um, uh, slow cooker, two-parter, Facebook Lives are about. The other part is making sure I have easy dinner. So I figured it was a win-win. And let me know what you think. Let me know if you're liking this, because sometimes I think, it's so easy to make something in the slow cooker, maybe nobody needs to see that. So you let me know. And hopefully next week, I'll get the recipes up from this week. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So I am going to go and try and get some of my work done and get that rice in the rice cooker on a timer. And you could do that in your Instant Pot too, okay? So I'll see you guys back here later tonight.